Farah Hanoun alongside Frank Hickman, who's going to be in Alexander Volkanovsky's corner this weekend. He steps in on short notice to take on Islam Makhachev. Pretty wild week, huh? Pretty wild week. Islam alaikum. How are you? Alaikum <laughs> I'm doing good. Thank you. Tell me, how did the process go when you guys got the call? Was it, all right, everybody, let's go? Like, what was it like? Yeah, it was all hands on deck. It was, uh, it was uh, I was teaching class in Phuket uh, at Bang Tao back at the gym. Um, Alex reached out to me, said, uh, the rematch is on, a bit sooner than we anticipated. He goes, uh, when can you be here? I said, Jetstar has a flight at midnight usually uh, to Sydney. He says, all right. Uh, his, his wife, Miss Volkanovsky, she went on, booked the flight. I got to the airport within uh, about four hours. I uh, had some logistical problems with my visa, so I had to wait for that for about two days. Wasn't able to get on the plane. Um, but then I arrived Friday morning. Uh, Craig was already there. And then um, it was we picked up where we left off. You know, nothing had changed. We just went right right into you know review mode, covering all the angles, clearing everything up, uh, what to look for, what what we should be aware of, uh, maybe just address, fix a couple of things we did wrong the first time. And um, yeah, it was you know talking shit like we normally would, keeping it light, but just realizing the opportunity that we have in front of us. And yeah, because the circumstances aren't ideal, of course, and this is a rematch he wanted, but this is a case where both guys have to keep winning, right? So anything could happen in this sport, so maybe they wouldn't have gotten to run it back. So was that the mentality behind it? Like, let's take this, we might not get this opportunity? Yeah, you know, it's like Alex had said, you know, you get one chance to be great. So, you know, this is a C saying is uh, could uh, very well be one of the the most, um, the word I'm looking for, the most biggest, I guess the biggest rival in uh, in, the, in combat sports right now is, is, is getting ready to unfold, you know, this Saturday. So this is something uh, really exciting. Both guys are at the pinnacle of their career, at the top of their weight divisions, respectfully, and they've been separating themselves from from that. You know, it's one thing to be at the top of your division, but to kind of separate yourself, to do what they've been doing and, and the way they carry themselves is, is incredible. And it's great for the sport. So this is something that uh, we're, we're really looking forward to because, again, uh, we get to right off the wrongs. We get to prove the, the doubters again. And, you know, like I'd said before, I know just like last time, kind of the chips are stacked against us, and that's where uh, Volk does some of his best work. So, again, we're all excited, um, and we're all in for a treat. You know, and by no means are we expecting an easy fight, and by no means is Islam expecting an easy fight. So to come into his backyard, like Alex had said, after the fight in Perth, we wanted to do it um, a bit sooner than we anticipated, but uh, this is what this is what makes things exciting. You know, this is what the sport is about. This is what makes things tick. And you talk about fixing those mistakes. It seemed like it was in terms of the judging control time versus the strikes landed. Volkanovski outstruck him. That control time seemed to play heavy in the sway heavy in the judges' favor. So, what do you feel like uh, Alex needs to fix in terms of that? Because he was never in real trouble of, of getting choked out or anything like that. But it seemed like that control time is what won is on the fight. Yeah, of course. When you have a guy of the caliber of Islam, you just have to. Uh, not if you can't stop it, you have to uh, mitigate it. Or that's what I'm looking for. Mitigate. Excuse my French, but um, yeah, you just have to you have to make the proper adjustments, and you just have to to get to where to where we're good at. And to be fair with you, you know, um, whether it's offensively wrestling, whether it's defensively wrestling, you know, Alex is uh, he's a complete martial artist, and and so is and so is Islam. So, you know, we'll be expecting a, a really good fight. And uh, like I had said, it's just something that we've been uh, looking forward to since last February. Did anything surprise you in terms of Islam's approach? I mean, he did stand with Alex a little bit. He implemented the grappling as well. But did anything surprise you in terms of his strength or or whatnot? Did anything surprise you at all? No, uh, a caliber of Islam being somebody who's the level of grappler that he is and everything, we expected what we expected, you know. Um, and like I said, I think this time with the fact that, um, you know, there's a respect there, but there's also not a respect there. Uh, and I mean that in the most respectful way. You know, you, you, you can't go into a fight like this it, it, respecting somebody like that. You have to, you know, shake hands, of course. You know, it's all love after, but during that time, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, you got to be greedy, you got to be selfish in those situations, and that's what Alex is pl plans to do. So what does Alex do differently this time around? Oh, come on, I can't give away too, too much information. You know, uh, just fight his fight, play what's in front of him. Um, Alex's IQ is something that separates him from the rest. Not only that, but, uh, you know, his mindset and, and, and mentally how strong he really is. So, you know, I think the bigger the, the stage, uh, the more he rises to the occasion. So 
Uh, again, I'll keep saying it all week. This is something we've been looking forward to since February, regardless of the time frame and regardless of how long we've had to prepare. Alex is somebody who doesn't take camp. He doesn't take off really. You know, just because he's out of camp doesn't necessarily mean he's out of camp. You know, he's a full-time dad, but he's also a full-time martial artist. So how about this? How, what do you feel like is kind of the biggest mistake he made in the first fight? What's the biggest mistake he made? Probably talking, probably when he was on bottom, just hitting him from behind and then not wanting to get to his feet. But again, it's all about how you sort of control time, you know. If somebody's, on, if somebody's underneath you hitting you and you're just holding off for dear life, squeezing because you're running out of gas, that's one thing. But again, um, yeah, we'll see. Do you expect uh, there to be more grappling from Islam this time around, more on the feet? How do you envision this fight playing out? There are several ways you can envision this fight playing out. Um, I, I see Volk touching him up is what I see. Um, and if Volk wants to initiate the wrestling, I think Volk can initiate the wrestling. You know, I don't know if you know about Australian wrestling, but it's not that he messes with. And uh, Volk Nausea had said, I think it was on the MMA Hour, that he predicts a, a knockout. That's how he sees it. Do you, do you feel, and then Craig Jones, I think, believed he said he sees a submission. So how about you? Like, Where do you feel like Volk wins this fight? Oh, of course, Craig said that. He's pump, you know, Craig, he's pumping his BJJ fanatics. Good on him. But uh, I, like I said, Volk's going to be able to play what's in front of him. And, and whatever he sees, whatever he sees, you know, um, maybe get some takedowns in the mix. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, it, it could go several different ways, you know, in a fight. With what we do, there's there's several ways to put somebody away, and um, Volk has options. He has variables. And uh, one last one. Uh, we talked about the circumstances not being ideal, but we saw Nate Diaz on short notice beat Conor McGregor. We saw uh, Michael Bisping against Luke Rockhold. So, in a way, does the short notice aspect, because maybe his body isn't as banged up as it would be in camp, is there a benefit to that? Of course, it always is. Anytime your body's a bit fresher, but you know, like I had said, he's never out of camp. You know, remember that, you know, Volk, like I've told before, he's a, he's a different specimen. He's a different athlete. Um, he, uh, he's at the pinnacle for a reason. So, again, this is, this is going to be the UNC versus Duke of rivalries, I think. So we're in for a big treat, you know. Um, not only that, just the whole card itself. And what better way, you know, obviously, the hospitality they provided Abu Dhabi. You know, Islam has a phenomenal team behind him. He's going to bring his A game. We're going to bring our A game. Um, maybe have some tea after who knows all right well i appreciate your time frank we'll leave it at that thank you so much and best of luck on saturday thank you man